I love construction. And the reason I love construction is it allows me to exercise my brain more than my muscles. In fact, construction gets a really bad rap as being this rough and tumble job where only the strong can survive. But in fact, it's actually the smart people who really thrive in this business. And why? Today is demo day at the Vroom Passive House. And this house, well, it's seen better days, but it's actually not such a great house to begin with. And let me tell you why. Every time we come into a project like this, we get to see a little bit of history. We get to see some physics, so we're kind of like an Albert Einstein trying to figure things out. But we also get to see a lot of problems having to do with the existing ground, with the existing house. So we're kind of like Sherlock Holmes. But then we get to see how people that built this house and remodeled this house previously adapted to all those challenges, not only with the physics, but with how the house and the land is operating. So we're a little bit like a psychologist, like a Sigmund Freud. Let me show you a little bit about this house, what were challenges are for this project and how we're gonna adapt, but also what happened before we got here. So you can see the house has largely been deconstructed already. We've already removed the entire backside of the house. In a second, we're gonna show you why we removed that and why we've kept most of the front of the house. And in fact, most of the front of the house is actually really good. And it's good quality lumber. We've had a few incidences that we're gonna to have to address. We're gonna show you those next. As we've talked about a lot in our previous videos, water is a house's worst enemy. Often, the bottom parts of walls don't get protected, and that's exactly what we're finding here. We see that if we remove this paper, so this is tar paper. That was supposed to stop termites and fungus from eating this house, but in fact, it didn't. And we see not only a ton of termite feces right here in this salt and pepper right here, but we see that rot has basically completely degraded this wall. In fact, this is called the rim joist. This holds up the walls and the roof and the floor. And we could see not only is it totally eaten away, but a lot of it is gone and filled with mud, an obvious sign of termites. This was caused by water not being dealt with correctly. And we see that we have the concrete of the driveway right here, right against the wood of the foundation. In normal construction, these have to be eight inches away from each other. They didn't understand the damage that water can cause to a wood frame structure. This is that damage. Here's yet another problem we find. We are standing in a ditch, but this ditch was underneath the house. And what we see right now is that this ditch was actually for the ducks that we see coming out from underneath the house. This ditch was so that they could get their big duct over to this side of the house to warm it. If they didn't dig this ditch and line it with concrete, it would have been sitting in the dirt. And we obviously can't have that. Now, how did this problem happen? Well, when they put this addition on, what they should have done is dropped the grade or the crawl space in the house down so that there was space. Modern code requires 18 inches between the bottom of the, of the floor joist and the ground itself. There was about three inches between the ground and the bottom of the floor joist here. So they had a problem. Now, what is the solution to that problem? Well, they poured concrete here. Well, unfortunately, they did a piss poor job of it and you can actually see it bouncing here. Why? Because that concrete is about half an inch thick. It's a little bit thicker than I can pick up. And that concrete broke up as soon as that house was built. So this had no protective effect on this house. And what did we see when we did the demo of this? All these floor joists were rotten. Why? Because they didn't manage problem, they didn't manage water correctly, and they had water and moisture migrating up from the ground and eating and destroying all the floor joists. Again, a problem that's easily solved with modern construction methods, but that needed to be thought about when this project was built, that wasn't. When I first started construction, one of the things I first learned was that anytime you pour concrete, the rebar, the reinforcing steel inside that concrete has to be three inches away from the outside of that concrete form. Now, why is that? Well, concrete is not an impermeable material, which means moisture can migrate through. And what do we know about steel and moisture? Well, anytime you put steel and moisture together, you get rust. We see this a lot on piers at the beach, but we also see this in houses. And what happened here was that this builder, when they originally built this house, they separated the steel from the outside by about half of an inch. That concrete allowed that moisture to get in. That rust caused the rebar to grow. And what ended up happening? This whole reinforcing pier. This pier 
supported the floor system. It all fell apart because the rebar rusted, expanded, and blew apart the concrete. This is essentially worthless. That is something that could be easily avoided by just doing things correctly. This is a retaining wall. Well, it's supposed to be a retaining wall. And by its very nature, you would expect that a retaining wall retains the earth. This retaining wall does not. In fact, it hasn't for a long time because it was not designed correctly. It is retaining not only a swimming pool up the hill, but about 10 feet of dirt. And we had come down and it's all made out of brick. And in fact, unreinforced brick. This entire wall has fallen apart because the original builders didn't build it correctly. Fortunately, we could see over here that they saw that it was starting to fail. So they packed a bunch of sandbags in front of it to keep it from falling over. This is not a solution. A solution would have been doing it right in the first place and building a wall that now is gonna withstand this whole load. What we're gonna be doing is taking this whole wall out, taking all this concrete out and building a new concrete reinforced retaining wall that can withstand not only the load of this hillside, but the load of the pool up above. So you may wonder, why do we have so many problems with water on this job site? Well, it all starts right here. We have this giant water collecting slab behind the house. And unfortunately, there is not a drain in sight. And also, there's no place for the water to go except right into the house. Whoever designed this house didn't design it correctly. So not only do we have problems with who built the project, we have problems with the land and how it wasn't addressed correctly, not only in the design, but honestly in the engineering. But we also have a builder's problem where we have builders that didn't understand the effect of water on a building and didn't put in proper water mitigation techniques. We need to divide this water around the house so that the water doesn't go into the house and cause all these water problems. Here's the problem. We have a bunch of people that all are involved in building these houses. We have architects that make the design. We have structural engineers that build the structure itself. We also have civil engineers that handle the water and the outside ground to make sure that we're addressing water correctly. And then we have the builders who kind of form the backstop to all of this. All of these people work for the benefit of the client to make sure that this house lasts a century or more instead of the 50 years that it lasted or actually since the last edition about 25 years. Now it's a moldy hunk of junk because this house is no longer fit to be lived in. So we all work for the benefit of the client because it's the client who's paying for all this. And we all need to make sure by each doing our job but also about looking at everybody else doing their job to make sure that we're not forgetting things. That's the collaborative nature of a good construction project. That makes sure that this doesn't happen in the future.